Hi everybody. Uh, this is a quick look at some of the latest UI additions uh, and how they help with the creation of schematic fusion models. Uh, specifically, how they help uh, with the use of mesh instances in fusion. This video shows how to set up a simple bisection fusion uh, where a mesh is uh, split by a plane. We start with two meshes, an ellipsoid and a one-sided plane. I'm creating a simple schematic fusion. Note that the new schematic workspace option is checked. That means the fusion schematic will be placed in a new workspace with the same name as the fusion item itself. I selected the ellipsoid first, so I'm using the subtract others from first selected option, which means the plane will be subtracted from the ellipsoid. And there you have it, a new schematic fusion in its own workspace, the result being just a half ellipsoid at this point. Uh, to create a bisected mesh, we'll need two mesh instances, one for the ellipsoid and one for the plane. Notice that the plane is hooked up to a fusion union node that has its output negated channel linked to the next node. That's because fusion often uses negated intersection in place of subtraction, which is what happened here when we created the new fusion item. The significance of that output negated connection will become clear in a moment when we wire up the mesh instances. So let's create that first mesh instance. I'm using a new fusion drag and drop option called create schematic fusion ready instance. It doesn't matter what I drop on, this action does not link the source and destination drop meshes. What it does do is create an instance of the drop mesh with all the tags and user channels required by Fusion. It also creates a link between the mesh channels of the source and instance meshes. More on that mesh channel link uh, a bit later. For now, let's uh, focus on making a second Fusion branch that will create the other half of our bisected mesh. For that, we'll need a new Fusion intersection node along with an instance of the bisecting plane mesh. This uh, second branch is a simplified version of the current branch. Since we only need to intersect two meshes, we don't need the two union modes, union nodes that you see in the uh, upper branch. We can bypass them and go straight to intersection. If you're not familiar with uh, editing schematic fusion models, um, several videos on our beta website will uh, help you get started there. Um, of course, in this case, nothing is happening yet. We need to create our uh, second instance and wire everything up. I use the same Create Schematic Fusion Ready Instance drop option with the plane. So now we have matching ellipsoid and plane source and instance meshes, perfectly aligned in three space. And they are ready uh, to start linking things up. This is where that negation of the original plane mesh becomes important. For this new instance intersection, we want the other side of the ellipsoid to remain. As we saw earlier, the upper branch, the uh, regular meshes, are already using a negated version of the plane, which is giving us that left side of the ellipsoid as we see in the models thus far. So we are using the bisecting plane's normal fusion feed as opposed to the negated option. So now our two branches are ready and we just need a union node to combine them. There's one branch and the other. I'll feed each of them into the new union node and finally connect that union node to the fusion items input channel. And that's it. Um, as you can see there in the 3D viewport, we've got our bisected ellipsoid. And of course, since the uh, instance meshes mimic the sources, we can alter that bisection by, uh, say, for example, rotating the uh, source uh, plane mesh. Uh, we can also do uh, vertex, uh, edge, or polygon uh, level edits on either the ellipsoid or plane. Additionally, things like uh, deformers and uh, mesh morphine and um, most forms of uh, polygonal uh, editing can be used on your live fusion model. There is a list of some things that don't work in the known issues uh, list available on the support forum.
All right, so uh, on to another topic. Let's look at an assembly version of the same fusion bisection setup. As you see here, I've got the same arrangement of meshes, an ellipsoid, a plane, and instances of each. The instances were created as before using uh, drag and drop, so all of the required tags and user channels are in place. Uh, and, and note again in this uh, 101 update that the links you see there between mesh channels are no longer created or needed. So what I've done here is move the bisection rig inside of this assembly. Uh, looking at the scene in the item list, we see those meshes and instances, uh, which are linked to the assembly's input channels, and the fusion item itself linked to the assembly's output channel. As before, uh, the two source meshes uh, form one branch of our fusion model and uh, their instances form the other. The, all the Boolean action takes place inside of the assembly. So uh, let's just double click on that and have a look. Uh, inputs from the two source meshes feed into the uh, upper fusion branch, which is uh, structurally the same as our uh, non-assembly version of this bisection. And of course the uh, inputs from the instances feed into this lower branch. And as usual, uh, branches are combined with a fusion union node, which in this case in turn is linked to the assembly's output channel. All right, so going back to the workspace, uh, we can play with expanding the fusion model, uh, you know, combining the assembly's output with additional fusion elements. In this case, I'm adding a mesh, and it's one that I don't uh, want directly involved with the bisection. Um, as usual, I'll use the Fusion's uh, drag and drop so that the new mesh is properly prepped for Fusion. Uh, I don't want to inherit any existing links, so I use the no link drop option. Combining this new mesh with the assembly's output requires a union node. So I add that node, then link up the assembly output and the new mesh, and finally link that new node's output to the fusion item. And naturally all of this can be expanded to include any combination of assemblies, uh, fusion nodes, uh, meshes, and mesh instances. And finally, a quick note on accommodating multiple inputs with assemblies and fusion nodes. If you know how many inputs you need, uh, you can simply create an assembly uh, with that number of input channels and link up your fusion sources uh, appropriately. Inside of the assembly, those sources are fed into a single fusion node input channel. Alternately, you can use a fusion union node outside of the assembly and that way accommodate any number of inputs. And of course, in that case, the channel link inside of the assembly is a simple one-to-one -one link. So this assembly stuff looks uh, pretty wide open and we uh, really look forward to seeing what you guys might come up with in terms of uh, assemblies and uh, presets and such. All right, guys, thanks.